Greetings. So, so glad you've joined us to study God's Word today. Uh, we are in the, the book of 1 Corinthians. We're in chapter 16, and, and um, we've got a, a two more weeks to go and, and to wrap up the class. And as always, we've, Mike has mentioned this a lot, but just if you have any questions or, or just want to discuss anything, feel, feel free to get with Mike or, or Rob or myself, and we'd be glad to, to study further with you. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, let's read verse 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I directed the churches of Galatia, so do you also. As Paul is drawing this letter to the Corinthians to, to a close, he uses the phrase, now concerning. You know, he's done that several times. He's, he's covered a, a range of topics to give direction, to give the commandments of the Lord and through the Holy Spirit. He's been guided to, to give these first century Christians and, and to pin these things for us and the subject is concerning the collection for the saints and he also says I directed also this to the churches of Galatia he says Paul gives direction for the collecting of the saints you know it's it's an it's an ongoing work and we're going to see that as we as we study tonight today Um, if you look uh, a couple of verses I want to look at in Galatians um, that he that he did give direction to them so let's take a minute and turn to Galatians 2 Galatians chapter 2 and verse 9 and, and 10 I want us to see the the pattern here that that Paul has tried to to give concerning giving. Galatians 2, verse 9 and 10. And recognizing the grace that had been given to me, James and Cephas and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship so that we might go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. They only ask us to remember the poor, the very thing I also was eager to do. Paul giving direction. We're going to see as we look at these verses. He's meeting with the leaders there, and and you can see the the pillars of the church and, and the other apostles that he's been meeting with. What did they say was important? What did they ask of Paul? Remember the poor. And Paul says, that the, you know, when he writes, the very thing that I also am, am eager, eager to do. He says, I'm eager to look out for the poor, the needs of my fellow brethren. As, I'm, as he's going about teaching and, and preaching the gospel to, his, to, to other places and encouraging the brethren, he says, I'm eager to look out and remember the poor. And of course, we have a, the accounts of in Acts where the brethren, they, you know, they, they pooled their resources, if you will, to, to help with other members, to help with those are in, in, that are hungry. And we also, we can look back at the, at the choosing of the seven. And, and if you recall what that was about, well, that was about seeing to the needs of the widows. You know, at this time in, in, in the world, you know, the, the, the lifespan was short. There was, there was widows. There's a lot of widows. There was orphans. And we're going to look at that some more. But Paul said he was, he was eager to look out for the needs of any brethren in need. And, and he gives us, you know, some more direction. In Galatians 6, turn a few page o- pages over to to Galatians 6, <clears throat> verse 10. Excuse me, we're going to read 7 through 10. Galatians 6, chapter 6, verses 7 through 10. 
Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not lose heart in doing good. For in, the, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have an opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Paul says, you, you reap what you sow. You're going to reap what you sow, and there's an opportunity to do good to all people, especially to the household of faith, to your brothers and sisters. While we have an opportunity, so. You know, we are so blessed in this country. We are so blessed individually and collectively as a body here in, in Jefferson City to sow to the good of others. Paul said he was, he was eager to do that. He was eager to do that, and, and he said, let us do good to all people. You know, James chapter 1, verse 27, tells us what pure religion is. Do you recall what pure religion is? Undefiled, pure religion, undefiled, is to look out for the needs of the widows and the orphans. Boy, there is so much good that we can do for our brothers and sisters, for those who are in need that are widowed and orphans, and, and, and we do that here quite well, looking out for the orphans. Let's turn back to, to 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 16. We are going to look some more at, at collections uh, for the, for the saints and, and giving. That's pretty much what we're, we're going to be focused on today. So back in 1 Corinthians 16, we're going to read verse 1 again, and we're going to go down to verse, through that, verse 4. Now concerning the collections for the saints, as I directed the churches of Galatia, so do you also. On the first day of the week, of every week, each one of you is to put aside and save as he may prosper, so that no collection be made when I come. When I arrive, whomever you may approve, I will send them with the letters to carry your gift to Jerusalem. And it is fitting for me to go, and if it is fitting for me to go also, they will go with me. So as I said earlier, Paul's giving the direction to the church, and he's getting specific for us. He's giving us the direction, he's giving them the direction, that on the first day of every week, each one, each one, you know, that's, there's a commandment there for each one of us to look, to look as we talked of earlier, look out for the needs each one individually we are to put aside and save as, as we prosper on the first day of the week. You know, when we think about that, we think about when we come together on the first day of the week. That's the day. That's the day the Lord has chose. That's the day that the Lord's tomb was, was found empty. You know, it's, it's a day that... We, we celebrate his, his, his rising from the grave and conquering death. The first day of the week, we're instructed to give. And the, the joy that should come from doing that in the fact that what we're coming together as a body to do, to remember his death, to remember what he's done for us. And so with joy, we can come together and, and give praise and, and honor and give back as, as we have prospered. This, this same day when you, we put aside as we're prospered, you know, that way, Paul says, a collection can be made. And that way there's no, there's no sense of urgency and haste. Paul's trying to, you know, to try to establish that there needs to be 
a system in place that, that you know, the needs are being met. And, and then when, when I come, you know, to, 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 we're going to get this money and, and this gift to be taken back to Jerusalem. We won't have to, they won't have to do in such a haste and, and just, you know, scrambling around to come up with the funds. They're going to be thinking ahead. And, and that's the direction that we're given as well. Think about it. Act upon it. And, and, and to accomplish that, you have to not simply be taking whatever's left. You know, the collection for the gifts that were to be carried in Jerusalem, it's, it's for their help. It's for their needs. And I spoke of earlier about the needs that we talk about the widows and, and the orphans and, and the famines that went on back then. You know, they don't have, they didn't have the luxury that we have of, of this wonderful farmers that we have in this nation and in this area and even at part of our body that have equipment and and can process things so easily with a lot of work but but so easily and and so the needs of others was was so important and, and it is still today god wants us to have a purpose in mind we need to look and as we've we've been prospered and let's look at a, at a couple more verses here Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We're going to read verses 6 through 8. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. Now this I say, who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do just as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. You know, here we, we see again, about the sowing and, and, and reaping, about sowing sparingly. And, and, and so we need to be focused on what we do to give back to the Lord. Purposed in your heart, he says, look ahead. And, you know, there again, we have the sowing and reapings. You know, you, you, you talk to a farmer and they're gonna tell you that for the most part, when the, the amount of harvest is, is determined on the amount of seed that's sown. You know, that just, that just makes sense, doesn't it? But Paul says God loves a cheerful giver. God loves someone who is looking, who is determining to look ahead to a harvest, to what good could be done with that money. That's what God wants, a, a cheerful giver and one who has purposed in his heart. You know, when you think about that, when a, a farmer looks back at that, that field that's sown, that, that bountiful harvest, what a blessing, what a good feeling that is when we look back at, at some of the good that's done. You know, not that we're looking for the praise or, or, or the, you know, the, the, the you know, accolades or our name put up in front of anyone, but think about the good that that gift has done, you were able to do. And he says, you know, not grudgingly or under compulsion, but from the heart, cheerful, praising God for, for some good that, that might be done with that gift that you've sown. And, and so Paul says, if you look there in verse 8, God will in turn through your giving make all of grace abound to you. There are so many blessings that we can see that God provides to us when we give. You know, it's, it's not about what we're going to get back, but his generosity is unparalleled. We cannot rec realize the blessings that can come in what even the littlest amount that we can offer to give back to our brethren and to give to one another. 
Let's look at, at some other verses on, on the matter of giving. Uh, let's turn to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 10, 11, and 12. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. For God is not unjust as to forget your work and the love which you have shown toward his name in having ministered and is still ministering to the saints. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you will not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And we're going to look at these verses in, in the context of, of, of giving. You know, we're talking about ministering to the needs. God recognizes, he says there, our work and our love, which we show toward those. And we do it in, in his name, don't we? He sees our work. He sees our love toward one another. You know, God sees our fruit. He knows what our fruit is. God knows everything we're giving. He knows every good deed that we do whether it be from, from our offering that we give to, to other giving or, or of ourselves or whatever it is, God knows what we are trying to do in his name. He sees our love. And to me, this, that is such great encouragement to know that, that the littlest things that, that I can do, God's going to know that I'm ministering or looking out for the needs of someone you and I need to show that same diligence that he's talking about there. And as to realize that we have, we have a hope. We have a full assurance of hope. This world is, is passing, but we have full assurance of hope. And it's not to, to do and do and do and then just look back and just say, Oh, I've done my part. I'm, I'm done. I'm going to rest for a little while. Let the next guy up. Take their turn. But it's, it's a constant lifestyle of living for the Lord and realizing the full assurance of hope and not being sluggish and being imitators of those who faith and patience and, and those who faith and patience inherit the promises. You know, we can look at many examples of those who, who have given, given of their life, given of their means. There, you know, there's a warning that comes here in these verses about not being sluggish, but to be imitators, he says there in verse 12. God knows our, what good we're doing for the, for the love that he has shown us. So I just want to encourage us, you know, don't lose our spiritual intensity in your giving, in your work, in your love. You know, in your phone calls and you're looking out for, for one another, you're giving to one another and, 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 and your, your means and whatever abilities God has, has given you. You know, keep growing in love. That's what God wants. He just wants us to keep moving forward. Be imitators of those who faith and patience inherit the promise. Be imitators of those who abide in the love of God. Let's look at 1 John 3, 17. 1 John 3, 17. First John 3, 17 says, But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Our compassion for our brothers and sisters and, and will, will lead us to want to help. Our love for our brothers and sisters will lead us to want to help. Our, our recognition 
of what God has done for us will lead us to help. Look back there in the previous verse. Verse 16, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. We're talking about giving of our means. And God, you know, if we recognize what we've been given, the love of God that has been poured out to us, the love that we've been shown, if we'll recognize what it's done for us, it'll lead us to want to help. It'll lead us to want to give back to God because God's love is abiding in us. So again, whether it's in collections or we know that go to help our brothers and sisters or, or needs of individuals that we, that we hear about just, just because it's, it's someone that you know, someone mentions to us or we hear about through the, you know, our, our announcements or, or we read about it on Facebook or you know, wherever the connection is that we have this through our brothers and sisters, each one should be looking to grow in giving. You know, I know that uh, that applies to me. I, you know, maybe, maybe our pocketbook hasn't grown over, over the years. Maybe we're on a, a set income, and, and, but our hearts aren't on a set income. They can continue to grow. We can look at ways to give and share. So back to 1 Corinthians 16. First Corinthians 16. So we know Paul has, has given direction. And he's given direction that, that on the first day of the week, collections are to be made. And, and in this example, in this example, the needs that we are spoken of, of the collections and the delivering of the gifts to meet the needs of Christians in other places in Jerusalem. One of the reasons to help other Christians and other places we can read about in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Let's turn over there, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 8, we're going to read verses 1 through 4. Now, brethren, we wish to make known to you the grace of God which has been given in the churches of Macedonia, that in a great ordeal of affliction, their abundance of joy and their deep poverty overflowed in the wealth of their liberality. For I testify that according to their ability and beyond their ability, they gave of their own accord, begging us with much urging for the favor of participation in the support of the saints, and this not as we had expected, but they gave themselves to the Lord and to us by the will of God. You know, we look at this, Paul writes about the giving that was being done by the churches in Macedonia. He says they were, they were begging and, you know, much urging, you know, you know beg and, and plead for for a privilege. And that's what I want us to really focus on, what a privilege it is to, to give back to the Lord and to give and to help. Taking part in, in the sharing and, and the fellowship of the giving to, to give the, you know, the relief. You talk about the participation and, and support. We're holding someone up, we're, we're, we're lifting them up and encouraging them and and verse five and, and six there talks about I find my place here. Um, and this not as we had expected, but they gave themselves to the Lord and to us by the will of God, so that so we urged Titus that he and that as he had previously made a beginning, so he would also complete in you this gracious work as well. You think about that, a gracious work. 
we're extending grace to others. The grace that, and, and, and things that we've been giving, we have an opportunity. And he says, all of this, their, their pleading to help was done while they were in poverty themselves. And you know, when I read that, it, 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 it some, in a lot of ways, it, it makes me to, to think of myself and, and you know, the, the improvement that I need to make and, and, and maybe the improvement that I have made, but just to keep growing to deal or to, to think of the, 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 what these folks dealt with and they were yet pleading to help and yet they were in poverty. Let's look at another verse, uh, Philippians 2. Philippians 2, verses 1 through 4. Philippians 2. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affliction and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Paul says, do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. All of this, all that we do, should be, should be motivated by love. You know, there's, there's many needs. And, you know, when you think about that, he talks about it to, you know, if, if any affliction, or excuse me, affection or, and compassion. Make my joy complete by being of the same mind. The, maintaining the same love united. You know, that's what should be our motivation to be one, to be motivated by the love that we have through God and are given by God through his son. You know, there's many needs. You know, if, if you look at our, our budget, maybe you've taken a, a budget uh, list off the, off the round table back there when we put them back there and, and you think about the, the, the budget that's in there. God is in control of each item that we as, 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 as men and, and as we work with our deacons and, and elders and, and ministers and the brothers and sisters to, to accomplish those things, God is in control. But as we look at those needs as a body, you think about those things. We're, we're furthering the gospel. We're looking out for the needs of others, whether it be here or other places, we're we're helping orphans' homes. We're we're helping smaller congregations that might be struggling. We're helping in other countries with the gospel and with their needs. You know, we're looking out for the interest of others, and each one of us here ha has a part in that. And and so I I want to encourage us and you know pick up that list. And, and, and pray about those items. Pray about those interests. Those are interests of, of the body here that, that we see that come from the scripture. They're benevolence, they're, they're orphans, they're spreading the gospel, they're looking out for the needs. So, so pray about those individual items and let God give the increase. Um, let's look at another passage Hebrews chapter 13 Hebrews chapter 13 Hebrews 13 verse 15 and 16 through him then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is, the fruit of lips that give thanks to his name. And do not neglect doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. 
And I said this earlier, God sees everything that we do with our sacrifices, with our doing good, and, and with our sharing. We as Christians are to be different from the world. You know, you probably have things in, in your business and, and work and opportunities to give and to help your, your, your coworkers, and, and that's, that's great. There's, not, there's, there's good to do that. But much of the world, though, is until there's, there's a, you know, there's a serious need, they're, they're usually about themselves, and, and I'm not, you know, wanting to, to throw rocks at people, but people are worried about trying to succeed and get ahead, and they're not looking out for the interests of others because they don't have an understanding of what we have, that God has given his son for us. And he says there in Hebrews, with such sacrifices, God is pleased. What a sacrifice we were given and what God gave to us in sending, sending his son. Doing good and sacrificing for others. Let's look at another passage. 1 John chapter 2. We're looking at a lot of scriptures today. But I want to encourage us. I, I want us to, to, to be thinking about how we can do our best to be giving back to God. And John, 1 John 2, chapter, excuse me, 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in, in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life, is, is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world is passing away, and also its lust. But the one who does the will of, the, of God lives forever. You know, when we look at this scripture, let us, let's, let us be doing the will of the Father and not loving the things of this world. You know, God doesn't say that we can't provide for ourselves and, and, and have nice, nice things, but, but where is our mindset? Where is our love? Let us be doing good to others, looking out for, for their interest and not loving the things of this world but loving others and loving our brothers and sisters. I just want to encourage us today to, to let's be about sharing and sacrificing. Let's be motivated by love. Let's, let's ask. Let's be looking for ways that, that we can help. Let's let the love of, of God abide in us to, to see for our brother's needs. Let's Let's have a desire. You know, God just wants a cheerful heart. He wants a cheerful giver, willing to give back and, and, and seeking opportunities to do good. Let's, let's encourage one another and let's purpose in our heart each first day of the week as we've been prospered to help with the collections. I, I pray that you'll, you'll pray about these things for yourself and, and as I said, for for the needs of the body here and, and for, for, for the needs of others. And I want to continue to encourage you and may God's blessing be upon you and, and take care until, until next time. Thank you.